My guest, hi Ryan, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, doing well. Good. It's Ryan Heim, who works with Windrider. Now, Windrider is an organization of Christian, how do I say this, Christian artists, Christian people interested in film, Christian... Christian anybody. Christian anybody yeah. who's interested in the relationship between arts and, uh, and faith. Uh, and we've been connected to Windrider now for several years, uh, for the last... Uh, well, several years, there's been a team of DTS students who have gone to the Sin Sundance Film Festival every year. We take a group out of the Media Arts Department and out of the Hendricks Center to experience the Sundance Film Festival directly. That's actually a class you can get credit for. Of course, you also have to pay for it. But still, um, and so if you're interested, this is going to be January 21st to 26th this year. We go to Park City, Utah to sit and watch what people are saying about what's going on in the world through film, mostly shorts and documentaries, as well as films that end up in the theaters about six to eight months later. And so Ryan is helping us because when we go, Windrider hosts us and takes us through a kind of preparatory seminar. Would that be the way to describe it? I, if... I mean, it's more fun than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we host um, an event parallel to the Sundance Film Festival. We're a partner of Sundance. We bring a crowd that they could not bring themselves. Um, Sundance is kind of scary. <laughs> um, as a Christian, you're kind of entering into Babylon. Um, and so we really bring in Christians to... Um, engage in the festival deeply and spiritually and offer a space for um, all of the attendees to kind of unpack what they're seeing, how they're seeing the spirit move in culture, um, and then also to talk to the Sundance filmmakers in our space and ask different questions than what they're used to. Um, at a Sundance Q&A, you're kind of hearing questions like, what was the budget for your film? What camera did you use? How'd you get this actor? And we're kind of interested in different things. We ask them who they are, why they care about the film they made, what we can do to help. Um, so it kind of breaks open that conversation a lot. So, so the time is spent in a combination of thinking about faith and film on the one hand, mm -hmm. and interviewing people who are participating in Sundance who have produced or director, in some cases, starred in, in, the, in the films that you see, and you're asking them about what motivates them to be who they are and what they're doing and why they're doing it, et cetera, which is a great way to hear someone wrestle with what's going on. And we're gonna, later we're gonna bring out three students who did this last year, and you'll get to hear from them. So, um, so uh, we're, uh, how did you get involved in a gig like this? Yeah. I mean, how, how does a Christian end up being connected to film? Yeah, it's a good question. I, growing up, I knew that film was an important medium. I really loved it. But I also saw the lies it was telling. A lot of films were telling. Um, and so I actually grew up in McKinney, Texas. Okay. Um, so not too far from here. And um, knew I wanted to do film. Studied at Harding University for film and got to attend Windrider. Mm. Um, and attend the Sundance Film Festival and see how the conversation of faith and film were intersecting in a way that I saw possible, but didn't know was happening. Um, and so the pandemic hit, I kind of knocked down Windrider's door until they gave me an internship <laughs> um, and started interning for them in 2020 and have be slowly, uh, but surely become the director of programming um, for Windrider and gotten to help curate um, Sundance, the Sundance event at um, Windrider, and then also year-round what you get to see. So short films that we show at the summit, and then also year-round, like we'll see today. So, um, so some of the people that Windrider um, gives exposure to when we're at the event is um, are people who have who have worked or thought about film for a long time. I think about John Pretty and Craig mm -hmm. Detweiler, for example. Uh, Craig teaches uh, about film and, and that kind of thing. So there's, there's a Christian perspective and a Christian eye that comes to this conversation that's making people think about the impact of film on our culture, uh, the kinds of things that they wrestle with, that, that kind of thing. Um, so, t so tell us uh, a little bit about Sundance itself. Um, what 
exactly is Sundance? Yeah, Sundance is maybe the biggest um, independent film festival in the U.S. for sure, possibly internationally. Um, they are all about independent storytelling um, and have so many submissions um, from young independent filmmakers worldwide. Um, and so it really is kind of a taste of what's coming. Um, when you go to Sundance, you get to see films that are gonna be in theaters about six months to a year later. They're gonna be nominated for Academy Awards. Um, and they are, it's independent films, so it's kind of untarnished with the commercial and it's pretty authentic storytelling. Um, and so we, as a Windrider get to plug into that um, premiere festival and be a part of the discourse following. And there is a lot of conversation that happens. You're traveling on buses from one venue to another, very short, you sit down, you can have a conversation about what film you saw and what, what you thought was interesting about it. These films, because they are not the more commercialized films, tend to deal with really themes of, of, of life and struggles that people are having to make sense out of life. And if you think about it for a second, pull yourself out of the church and not having a faith and yet still having to deal with what's before you in life and thinking through, how do I put that together? And, and you watch people wrestle and struggle with putting together. Later, I'll talk about a film when the students come out and we talk to them. One that we saw that, that traced the internship, a chaplain, well, it was, an in, it was an internship leading into the chaplaincy that involved people of a variety of the faith. One of the scenes was a Jewish chaplain dealing with a Catholic couple that had just lost a baby, and she's leading them in a, uh, in a prayer time about the lost child as a Jewish person from a Christian perspective as a Jewish person with this couple who are going through the grief of having just lost a child. The scene was just absolutely amazing. We got to interview the person who put that documentary together. And in the midst of putting that documentary together, we asked, so how are you processing what you're filming? Because it seemed to be pretty intense. To which his answer is, I'm still processing what I was filming. And the only reason he was filming it was because his sister was a nurse in a hospital who understood chaplaincy programs. And that's how, that's how he got to taking on this topic. So it's stuff like that that Sundance, and it's international, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. Some subtitles, you'll get used to it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of international, and yeah, it really is prolific. Just And it, what's cool about it, I think, as someone who enjoys film, I understand that film not only reflects culture, but it helps to shape it. And so it really is this finding out what's going on in our culture, what kind of topics we're wrestling with as a people, um, you get to see that in, at Sundance um, a little bit before it hits the market. So just to highlight the way in which we're connected to Windrider, if you go to our webpage, which is uh, hendrickcenter.dts.edu slash the library, there will be a carousel on that page that is just Windrider provided materials that they have curated to us. We're gonna show you a sample in just a moment of one of these and you can get a feel for the, a variety of kinds of things. This will be a little dip your toe in the water thing uh, where we can show you a little clip of the type of thing that we're dealing with in short independent films that ask really basic or display really basic uh, life questions. So um, we're going to go to that now. The short film is entitled A Concerto is Conversation. As I said to you, if you're on the stream, there's going to be a QR code that you're going to have to pick up in order to see what we're seeing here in, in the chapel. So if we can run that now, that'd be great. So that's the kind of thing that you see at Sundance coming from the heart of people who are trying to make sense out of life. And uh, the one line in that film that always resonates with me is, I hope I had a little something to do with it. Um, you get a glimpse of life up close and personal when you watch a film like that. Film has a way of being a lens to your soul. And uh, 
So I hope you enjoyed that glimpse. I want to inter. Um, uh, Ryan and I are going to interview uh, three of the students who went with us last year. I've got Cheryl in up here, Bessie, and Matt, and uh, uh, we went through the snow and the hill <laughs> that, of the place where we stayed at, at Park Cities. Every the challenge at the end of every day at Sundance was either Neil Coulter or myself trying to drive the car up the hill to the place where we were staying with ice and snow literally everywhere. And uh, there were times we got stuck halfway up and worked our way up, but we're still here, so that <laughs> is a miracle. So, um, Ryan, what would you like to ask these students uh, in, terms of, in terms of their experience both with Wind Rider and Sundance? Yeah, I might ask a big question first. Um, but how have you seen, or how have you experienced a space like Windrider tries to create post Windrider, like post Sundance? Have you been able to have conversations similarly to that? Um, shown films or watched films with friends and created that dialogue after? That's a great question. Um, I have seen that, and I really want to thank the class, uh, DTS and Sundance and Windrider, for creating that possibility, because after the experience at um, the festival, what I found is it had opened up my heart and my mind to see the opportunity for God conversations, conversations about Jesus that normally may not exist. Um, within popular culture, within the things that actually were happening in films. And I found this at the festival as well as when I got home. Um, but even at, at the festival, you'd, you know, you'd finished watching a film about something really deep and heart-wrenching and you're sitting next to someone you don't know and you, you've both had this shared experience and you have an opportunity. I took the opportunity. I had some incredible conversations with people and even prayed with um, my Uber driver on the way home, who turns out he was a prodigal son and had been questioning his faith. And we started talking about one of the films and I said, yeah, do you notice the God yearning, like the yearning for something deeper and more? And like God put that in him. And we just had this incredible conversation. So yes, it's helped. And even coming back, speaking to my non-believing friends it's like, yeah, we've got something to talk about. It's an entryway to a conversation about Christ, so it's been incredible. I think for me, um, being at Sundan uh, Sundance, it was, it's a secular environment, and a lot of my experiences there, riding the Utah bus and going from place to place, people ask, well, who are you with? Because you have these different groups from film schools or just people who are there in Utah, and I'm like, oh, I'm with... Dallas Theological Seminary, and there's like, a seminary? And I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, and then like Bessie said, it opens up an opportunity to share the gospel, but also expose people to the idea that God is within everything, and um, for us to go into these spaces and to shed his light in an environment that may not outwardly speak of him, but like within their films, within the experience, you can see the things that break his heart. You can see the things that are breaking the hearts of people around. And then it opens up that door for you to, to, to share with them. There's a greater joy. There's a greater response. Um, the response that you're typically used to might not be the best, but I know someone who is. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, before you answer the question, if we can put the QR code up on the, on the slide, if you have a question from the audience about anything that we've raised, there's the QR code. It takes you to slido.com and, uh, and then we can take your, we'll be taking your questions here in a little bit. Matt, go ahead. What did you learn from being at Sundance? Thanks. Um, I think Wind Rider provided a great framework for why we were there. Um, the, the biggest question when I came back was, why did you go? <laughs> and I had to try to figure out, why did I go? Did I just want to see movies? Did I want to you know, hobnob with screenwriters? Uh, no, I wanted to do that, but I also wanted to engage culture and figure out the heart behind how I can use my degree in THM <laughs> to actually engage culture and love people who have different perspectives. Um, and so Windrider did a great job of bringing other people's voices that we wouldn't hear otherwise um, and ask those deeper questions. Why did you produce this piece of art? What perspective did you bring? 
when you uh, made this made this work. So I really appreciate what Rin Ryder brought to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How, how do you feel like you're different having gone? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Um, I feel like there's a sense of boldness that I have now. Um, in the beginning, when I was on those buses, I was nervous to say I'm with a seminary because I'm like, I just don't know how to um, explain or interact. Like, how would they understand why I'm here? Like, I know why I'm here. I, I love film, but I also love Jesus. And I believe that he's within this grand scheme of storytelling that you get through movies. And um, I feel like there's boldness. There's the idea that one is not separate from the other. Um, that you can have this conversation about film. It's not something that's just for the secular world, but through storytelling, you can evoke so much change and get a, a deeper lens into other people's experiences. So, yeah. I, I found it change, has changed me because previously, I mean, it's easy when you're in seminary to kind of be in this bubble. You know, we're in our classes, we're around believers all the time, and to, to be willing to step into the difficult conversations, the ones that often um, I might choose to not get, you know, say anything about, that now it was like, okay, we can't avoid this. This is what everybody's feeling outside the four walls of the church. And we're here to learn how to share the hope. How can we share the hope if we're not willing to step into the conversation? So it's absolutely changed completely how I view things and, and given me kind of like you say, Sherilyn, that boldness that we have an answer. We have an answer to every problem out there. Jesus changes everything. But until we're able able to uh, maybe use slightly different language or just to open that doorway a little differently to perhaps evangelism on the street, just to take those extra opportunities that we have every day. So I, it's changed my conversations with my uh, non-believing friends and a couple actually have come to the Lord since mm. this experience. Praise so, yeah, praise mm. God. Definitely changed how I view film. Mm -hmm. uh, I can go, oh, I saw that six months ago. <laughs> um, but it's also shown me I need to expand my horizons of what stories I do engage with. Yeah. Um, it can't just be action adventure. It can't just be, you know, Christian films. You can watch documentaries. You can watch these different films that you would never watch before and engage with them and ask those deeper questions, but also expand your horizons, hopefully, and say, oh, I've never heard that perspective before. How can I engage with that even better? So just to show you the range of the kinds of things they're talking about, a handful of films that we saw last year. Uh, one of them was called 28 Days in Mariupol, which was about the beginning of the war in the Ukraine, a documentary film from within, within the war by a, by a war correspondent uh, who was Ukrainian, who was actually at the film festival and took questions afterwards about the nature of the experience, et cetera. That has showed up, I think, on CNN. Uh, that documentary. Uh, there was another documentary, a comedy, about uh, a divorced father who inherits a child from a mother who had abandoned it, that child and the building of their relationship by a man who never thought he would be a father. And so wrestling with that kind of a space. I've already told you about the chaplaincy situation that, that was involved. So I'm going to ask you all, what was well, do you, do you have one film that you can mention that you saw briefly and tell us a little bit about what it was about just to show the range of what you're exposed to at, at Sundance? We're looking at you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, Deepest Breath was a really, really amazing documentary uh, about two free divers um, and tracking their story and how dangerous and thrilling and heartbreaking uh, of a story can be, can be had in such an amazing sport. And it's on Netflix, so if you, if you have Netflix, go and watch that. Yeah, I love that movie too. And uh, just seeing how, how far people will go risking life to feel 
transcending this life to feel something deeper. I saw that God ache there. Um, I also loved, um, I watched a wonderful film called The Longest Goodbye. I think it's been a while. but mm. um, It was about um, a, a couple who had gone through, a, the husband was going through Alzheimer's and just the, the memory loss and and yet the, the relationship still building and the love that was, you know, they say that we are the softest and most tender when we're young and then when we're older and especially as we lose memory. So that was really heartbreaking but so beautiful just to see the identity that is woven into each of us that remains even when we've forgotten our earthly identity. Mm. Um, do I have to say just one, Dr. Bach? There's two. There's... Um, <laughs> Um, there's the one that you spoke of, Scrapper, mm-hmm. about the uh, single father, but the other one was A Thousand and One, which is set in the 90s of a single mother who essentially kidnaps her son out of the foster care system, and you're tracking their journey through the 90s, the early 2000s, the things that are happening with them personally, their dynamic. If you kidnap someone, so there's other things that happen where they have to change for him and his environment, how he introduces himself in the world, because you can't go by what you went by before. Um, But then also reconciliation. I think that was the biggest one for the both of them for me, how it deals with reconciliation, having grace for your parents, um, knowing that we all go through our own trials, but... um, We go through our own trials and that shapes us, but giving that grace to the parent, because sometimes with the single mother, there are things that were outside of her control. With Scrapper, there was things that the father struggled with in his childhood that prevented him from being there initially. So it's not sometimes that the parent or the influence in your life doesn't want to be there, but there are other things that are hindering them. Um, And knowing that through it all, God is with you because there's joy at the end of the story. So, yeah. So I'm going to go to the questions that people are, are sending in. Um, this one's probably for you, Ryan. Uh, where are these films shown outside of Sundance? Where, and how can, you, how can you get to them? Well, you come to Windrider and Sundance with DTS <laughs> um, is the easy answer. But they, so they get picked up. So the Sundance Film Festival is a big place um, for filmmakers to find distributors. And so a lot of Um, Those films get bought while we're at the festival. Um, Coda is a great example. Coda was bought at Sundance by Apple TV for like a giant amount of money. Um, And so a lot of those will will trickle out over the the year um, on different streaming platforms in theaters. I recommend finding like a small... um, movie theater in town that shows indie films because they will be showing films that were at Sundance. Um, We have one where I live now, in Idaho. And um, it's, you can rely on those small theaters to to watch these kinds of films, typically. And you didn't plug the wind. I know, I was getting that, I was getting (laughs) that. Thank you. Um, So, and then, Short films that are sometimes at Sundance, but also that we, Windrider, a big part of my role at Windrider is to curate these short films. We award them at our event, um, but also we show them year round on Windrider Studios. So because I'm here today and um, Hendrick Center has hosted me and Windrider, we are offering everyone access, free access to our entire library of films. It's over 200 short documentary, um, narrative, animated, student films, all kind, a huge range. Because um, we really want to equip all of you and everyone, not just people who can come to Sundance, um, with this ability to use film to crack people open, to have conversation. Um, so you have access. There's Yeah, there we go. Um, You can scan that QR code and get access to this library of films. um, And they come with episodes of The W, which is a QA and a with the filmmaker. Some come with theological reflections and even discussion guides, exploration guides that will help equip you in a chapel setting, in a small group setting, a Bible study, um, to watch films like we just watched a concerto's conversation. And have a Christian conversation um, 
that resonates with, with everyone. So, so. so imagine this. Imagine you had a small group in your church and the small group could take a little 15 minute time period to watch something like you just saw and have a discussion around it and open that up to your neighbors to attending. Just imagine that and the opportunity that that might create for, for you. We also um, curate these films through Windrider and we have a carousel uh, on our webpage. It's uh, hendrickcenter.dts.edu uh, slash the library. And if you go there, you will see this part of the page and we have collected uh, some of the best of what Windrider offers on that carousel. Uh, we renew it once a year and update it. Uh, let me tell you a little story about a concerto is a conversation that's interesting, and it's this. Ben Proudfoot, who has won uh, Academy Awards for his documentary work and who w went through uh, Windrider at one point, um, uh, originally was just going to film the story of the debut of the concerto. That was originally what he was planning to do. And he got into the life of the young composer that you saw and saw this relationship and history that he had with the grandfather. And he said, the concerto's not the story. That's the story. And totally flipped what he was planning to do as a result of just doing his work as a good filmmaker and a good storyteller in terms of thinking through uh, what really counts. And so... Um, one of the things that's fun about attending the event is you get these inside stories behind what motivated someone to film. I already told you the one about, well, this one filmmaker just made a film because he had a sister who was a nurse and uh, just wanting to think through what the experience of, think about all the trauma that happens in a hospital and what it means to be a chaplain and the situations that are thrust upon you, et cetera, and to trace that in film so that people can see it. It gives you a vista on things and experiences you would be unlikely to experience on the natural flow of your own life. And so the potential here, I think, is immense. So I wanna uh, thank our guests for being with us. Ryan, thank you for coming down from Idaho to come back to Texas <laughs> and, uh, uh, and be a part of us. I, I hope you have found this uh, enlightening and do take advantage of the QR code. Can we put the Windrider QR code back up there uh, before we move on? And then, so there it is. If you want to get that for yourself, um, that's, uh, and thank you. Thanks yes. to Windrider for making that offer to our students. We really do appreciate it. Let me close this in a word of prayer. Father, one of the most basic theological concepts that we deal with in seminary is that every person is made in the image of God and is called to image God in one sense or another. And we know that we live in a fallen world. It isn't hard to see it and sense it, even to experience it sometimes, maybe even all the time. And yet there is this longing that people have to make sense out of their lives and to understand it. And sometimes film is the way we see that. And so we pray for eyes and ears that could be good listeners, that could hear the cry of people who say, there's got to be something more in life, or I'm trying to find myself, or how do you put this all together? Help us to be pastors not only when we're at church, but when we're on the streets. And may your spirit guide us as to how to have those conversations and how to encourage people to draw closer to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.